Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Make Code Arcade Advanced Stream. I'm Richard at Richard on the Make Code Forum. And I'm Joey at Jay Wanderl on the Make Code Forum. And hello, hello. Uh, that's hello, the wrong Make department. Tendo. Uh, Make Tendo. I'm sorry. We're not in the Halo department. Yeah, sorry. We, we've we been there before. But yeah. Um, yeah. I've they seen have a, Master Chief. Yes. In the Halo offices, they have a life size Master Chief sculpture. It's very intimidating. I actually saw it a few weeks ago, months ago, months ago now. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, anyway. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, so first off, Game Jam update. The Game Jam is officially over as of Monday. Um, we are going to be doing judging um, this week. We're hopefully going to be doing like our first round of judging on Friday. So, um, you know, uh, I will also on Friday post on the forum an update as to when we will have the live stream announcing the winners. So keep an eye out for that. The reason I'm doing it on Friday is just because I'm going to have everyone in one room on Friday so I can figure out a schedule for the for the judging and then, you know, we can go from there. So mm -hmm. um, uh, but it might take will... a little bit longer too but just because it, there was a hundred something entries how many there was 106 was submissions yeah so pretty yeah. good i think that's our second biggest game jam um yeah. and i mean it's I thought, middle of summer I yeah i thought it was going to be lower. way lower because because we're doing it in the middle of the summer so i'm glad it was that that big mm -hmm. um but uh we will um yeah I, i'm going to be trying to do game jams on a more regular basis and i promise the next one will not be in the middle of holiday time so, um, you know, don't worry about that. It's middle um, of all it, like, you know, the song it's, it's holiday time somewhere. I don't know that song. You don't know that song? No. No. Okay. Anyway. Um, so, uh, like I said, I'm going to try and schedule these, um, on a more regular basis. Now that I know that I can run them, the, the reason that there was such a long, uh, um, uh, jump between the last one and this one was because I used to run them with Shannon and now Shannon, you know, has gotten on to different things. So um, now that I know how to run them by myself, for the most part, um, I will, I'll try to do them on a more regular basis. So, um, and so I do just says also pre prehistoric was a really tough theme. Really? We chose it to be an easy theme. You know, you just had to put, just have to put dinosaurs in just, it. Just put a dino in there. Did you not yeah. see my, did you not see my example where I have a dino rising from the ground that is supposed to show just dino, man. Just dino it up. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, I, you know, we're for the game jams, we always try to do the more general, um, mm -hmm. like, themes. So where it's just kind of like a conceptual thing. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, Drea says, but art is hard. Yeah, fair. It is hard. We had some good uh, dinos already, man. Uh. On the on the prehistoric game jam page, um, uh, you saw there was a GIF that had a T-Rex yelling on it. Um, I spent so much time animating that T-Rex. In fact, I probably have it in here somewhere. Um, it took me forever. Uh, I'm not going to look for it now. Okay. Uh, oh, one anyway. more thing we can show. There's We have a fancy tutorial that's got a lot of people using it if you want to try it, if you like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I don't know. This this I'm assuming this audience doesn't play with the tutorials as much anymore just because they're going to be more used to making things. But apparently this one's been a lot of fun for users. It's highest yeah. one month tutorial of all time for us. I'm, I'm not going to do it on stream, but um, you can get to it on the home screen. Um, it is based off of the upcoming Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Um, upcoming? upcoming? I guess it came out today. So current okay. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. It's upcoming whenever you go to see it. Yeah. Joey, I, what's your favorite Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle? Um, purple boy. Okay, Donatello. Yeah. But I'll, I'll I'll accept purple boy. Well, it's purple boy is a better name. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do the game jam. Well, that's that's not that's too bad. But you can always send your games to us on the forum. That's a great time. You don't have to, yeah. you don't have to make things only in the game jam. Uh, I, I, if you want if you if you want a game jam theme for your personal game jam, how about um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? There you go. Um, yeah, don't worry. There will be more game jams. So in the future, hopefully you'll be able to join one. And like I said, we do. We kind of try to do a variety of themes. So yeah. um, if this one didn't speak to you, we'll try to find something else. So anyway, to start off stream today, I wanted to show off some things that I have been doing um, on my fancy text extension. Oh, Make Tendo says, I like Orange Boy, Michelangelo, the, the party guy who likes pizza. Uh, yeah. I like Raphael. You know, because he's cool and he's got Psy. I'm sorry, and I don't understand what you just said. Can you can you explain to the plebeians here? 
Who do you like? Raphael? Yeah, who which one which one do you like? Oh, the red boy. Okay, yeah, thank you. I I okay. understand that. Um and then of course nobody likes Leonardo because he's super boring. All right. Um so let's get into um uh showing off you know what I've been working on. I'm gonna go ahead and add my fancy text. By the way, this if you want to use this extension, um I'm probably not gonna be making too many more breaking changes. Um, so you can try it out, but still don't use it on anything really important. Mm -hmm. You know. Um but yeah, I mean, anyway. as with most things, it'll be fine if you stick with just this and you don't start wanting to add more extensions that rely on it in the future or anything like that, right? Like you can keep using that version in that your project, but it would be annoying to not be able to update it. Yeah. OK, so um, we added um, a bunch of new stuff. So let's see the wick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Um, title case, nice, yeah. Yeah, so um, if you haven't seen this before, it's um, an extension that lets you, um, all right, this should probably go vertical at some point. Um, it lets you uh, control things like fonts. So here, um, I've added some new fonts. I think I showed them off last time, but now there's like an italic font and stuff. So that's kind of cool. Um, and you can also do things like set a max width so that it automatically does line breaks. So if I set it to be 80, half the screen, um, we'll see this break into multiple lines. There we go. Quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. And um, new features I've added. So um, we have um, frames now. So just like you can with show long text, you can go ahead and add one of our built-in frames. So here, we'll just put it on this one. We'll change the color to be black. There you go. Now you got a word bubble. Fun. Um, we also have um, in here um, some animating stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and start an animation on this guy. We're going to do um, animate fast. And um, you'll see that there is now an until done or in background option. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, if I do until done, just like with the music blocks, it's going to pause until the animation has finished. If I do in background, it's just going to start and keep going. So, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully that's useful. Um, and um, so another thing, um, you saw how it was changing height as the animation plays. Um, I realize that you probably don't always want that. So I've also added some flags. Um, so you can set the flag change height while animating to off. It defaults to on. Um, and I, it helps if you set it before you do the animation. Um, mm -hmm. And it will uh, just always use the maximum height. Um, there are two other flags. There's change width while animating. So if I turn that one on, and actually I also have to turn off always occupy max width, which defaults to on. Um, then it's going to, there you go. So it also changes width as it animates to mm -hmm. just fit the text. So there you go. That's kind of neat. Are you able to set a max height? Um, no. No, OK. Oh, no scrolling. To, yeah. I, yeah, I've been trying to think of what the right behavior is for that. Like, do I want to do all of the story stuff where I automatically break it into pages? I've never really been satisfied with how that turns out. Obviously, I want to have some APIs that let you do that. But I don't know if it should be a part of this extension, be a part of an extension that consumes this stuff. You know? Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, so yeah, I'm, you could obviously want both, too, right? You could, have, you could want it as scrolling terminal style text where it just grows up as needed. Yeah. So Untied Arena says, is there scrolling text? No. Like I said, I haven't been I've, I've been, you know, going back and forth about if that belongs in this extension or not. Um, so we'll I'll, I'll come up with something around that. The thing is, I don't want this. I don't want this extension to get super bloated like the story extension did. The story extension is pretty bloated, and I want this to eventually replace that extension. So um, yeah. <laughs> It definitely okay. makes sense to split it up either, right? Um, anyway, another fun thing. Um, there's now set animation sound. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and, well, let's make an interesting sound before we. You can go tick, 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 tick. Or like yeah. a robot going beep, 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 beep. Exactly. That was what was in my mind. There you go. So we can go ahead and set that animation sound like that.
There you go. And as a as every time a character prints, it um, will play that sound. So just like you had in the story extension, except now you can make your own sound. So you can have characters have different voices or you know do whatever you want. And um, I put in a sound effect here, but technically you can put in anything inside of the music category, just like you can in these. So you could also put in a song if you wanted. I wouldn't do that, but you could put in a song. Um, it's probably fine if the song is just like one note. Yeah. Um, what? Will it just keep on playing the song on top of each other every note? Like if you have a... Oh, yeah, totally. So it'll play like start it and then offset by one note, start it by... Oh. Actually, I don't remember if songs cancel each other out or not, but it might. I, I guess there's know. the max... There's probably the max limit of like three on hardware. So I think we... Yeah. And you can always, if, if you call stop all sounds, it will also stop these sounds. So, okay. Um, um, I look forward to your nightmarish creations, everybody. Yeah, I, I would just stick with the sound effect block, but you can do other ones if you want. Maybe you do want to use tone or something. You can use that one too, or or the sounds right here. Like you know, I can go ahead and um, put in put in. I forget. Was there was there a callback function for? Uh, when notice for when a single character is printed there is not um okay because i i kind of was thinking of that would be fun as like animal crossing uh like basically a, a switch case on the string that's printed to do animal crossing style narration um i see so you want to be able to change the sound for every character that gets printed yeah but yeah, I don't know. As a callback, right? So just like a event that it fires off. But I understand that that is needless and maybe another extension. Yeah, that might be another extension. Um, but um, I get I get what you're saying. Mm. All right. Was there anything else I did? Um, the, is there scrolling text? Are you talking about like a marquee tag on Sandra Arduino? I, I, the answer would be no because we don't have max height right now. But. Um. Antonio <laughs> says yes, Marquis. I think that's a joke, though. Um, like many, like many, many, many entries. Minions. Oh, okay, okay like not that. The joke. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I, I'm not doing the partial text thing that I do in many menu for this. Um, again, it's kind of like this. Feel this definitely feels like we can keep it as a base and then add other extensions on top of it, like re, re implement parts of many menu to you consume this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I might eventually try to unite all of that code, I think, um, including in mini menu. I mean, I definitely will at some point. Um, mini menu was written. There are more things in the game engine now than I had when I was writing mid -menu, mini menu that I can use to improve perf and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll probably switch mini menu over to using this text at some point. But um, the drawing partial text thing would be really nice. I think I need I need to do a C++ API for that, though. Um, because the way I'm doing it in mini menu is pretty hacky. I don't want to keep doing that. So um, I'll probably at some point do a C++ API for making that happen. Um, but, you know, it's more work to do C++ stuff, so it'll be later. Um, and yeah, OK, so I think that's it. Um, so you t keep keep looking out for this. Um, I will be adding more fonts at some point, but right now I'm just really focusing on the APIs and stuff. Um, but there's already some fun ones, so I make a better frame. Oh, whoops, that box. Um, the frames, by the way, they work exactly the same as the frames in main menu and for the, um, well, the ones in main menu actually work slightly different than the ones in game. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's not the best. Uh, <laughs> let's see, Get this over here. Yeah, you do have to take your font into account when you are um, setting a max width. There you go. Um, so um, the the things in mini menu um, they they don't allow you to put an interior image because the perf is really bad on that. Um, and on game uh, show long text, you actually can. Um, though I don't think anyone ever does because it would look really stupid. But um, if I go ahead here, I can show what I mean. I'm going to select um this one and i'm going to just put in some scribbles yeah i guess you could use it for like making it look dirty maybe like if there's like a dirt spec on this one that could fit but it, i don't think anybody uses it as you mentioned yeah um and so now if i do show long text like this 
you can see that that interior thing actually gets repeated, which of course makes this impossible to read. So um, that's, uh, yeah, don't do that. Um, but uh, I just took away that ability in um, mini menu and in this extension because, um, like I said, it's much better for perf, and also I don't think it's useful. Mm -hmm. um, so if I if I draw in here, this is going to have no effect. It's just going to take on um, the first pixel that is inside this interior square. Gotcha. So if it's white here, it'll be white, and you know it's just it's just going to ignore all this. So yeah, FYI on that, and this is all documented and stuff. Oh, and then um, last thing I'll do is um, remember this also has my fun little text tags thing. Um, so actually, I'm going to do rainbow. Uh, so you can um, uh, use those as well. So there you go. Very groovy, this font is when it's in rainbow. Um, so uh, yeah, check it out. All right. Um, with that, let's go ahead and get on to the game that we're working on today. Um, yeah, I'm going to mute before I open up what unsigned Arduino just sent. One second. Yeah, I didn't want to open it on stream. I have a feeling I know what it is. Yeah, it's just a rising note uh, ba -da 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 on each. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a good time. Yeah. Um, OK, I'll I'll, I'll, um, I'll I'll listen to it later. Um, all right, so where are we? Uh, we were doing a sentient stuff game, so a game where you could walk around and make household items sentient. Mm -hmm. um, and last time um, I started writing code with Kim and we put um, uh, all of these things into the world. So we actually have defined a little thing where we put a tile for each of our items, and then we can place them in the world by drawing a rectangle that is the size of what the item is and putting it in there. Gotcha. Um, and um, I still need to redraw the refrigerator because um, it's a tiny fridge. It's real tiny. Yeah. Um, I wasn't looking carefully. That was 8 by 8 time up? Yeah, it was an 8 by 8 time up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we could have, you know, maximum granularity. Um, and so uh, I, I need to redo this fridge at some point, but um, you know that'll be later. I don't want to spend all day doing art. Um, big teapot. It's it's not ridiculously big, but yeah, it is big. Uh, okay. So um, the other thing we did was we made it so that these things could talk, um, and they have faces. So right now the faces are invisible, but if I turn um, the invisible off, we can see the faces on all of these items. Um, oh. So, yeah, there you go. Now they're all happy. Oh, did you uh, make a mad face too, by the way? No, all we have is smiling and then um, talking, which is oh, okay. Talk, 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 talk. Yeah, right. we, we we can come back to this later. We might need like you know, angry face, uh, shocked face, all sorts of things. Yeah, Ansari Duna says only slightly creepy. Nintendo says cute. That back. That's what we're going for. Somewhere between creepy and cute. Um, uh, what's the uh, what am I thinking of with that uncanny valley? Uncanny valley? That's not really that. That's like did the quality of the art making it really creepy at certain points. Yeah, this is not uncanny valley, but um, I, I get where you're going. Um, all right. So um, we're gonna go ahead and put the um player character into the world. So we're gonna have to draw a player character. Um, and uh, I have no ideas for what this player character should be. I'm just going to draw a guy with a hat. Like me, I'm a guy with a hat. Yeah. Oh, can't have pink skin. Was the background pink? Do green skin. That is a hip 1990s character for sure. He um, kind of looks like 
what did the master of simple machines look like i feel like it was similar to this i could see If you've never played Master of Simple Machines, look it up on the forum. Great game. Great game. I'm not biased at all. Dude. Wow, that is a nice sweater he's got there. I guess oh. no, it's like a it's a it's a dress shirt. Yeah. But collared shirt? Not collared. It doesn't have a collar. Now it's got a collared. Nice. Yeah. Um and let's do we want to give him Um can it can we have a monocle? No. No, cannot. Nope, he cannot. <laughs> did he get punched in the face? What did he do wrong? I don't know. Ah, um, oh, that was that was it. I feel like I got to give this guy a little bit more height. Which makes sense anyway. He's still going to be pretty short compared to the things in this world. Yeah. But Einstein everybody knows says short like me. Yeah. We can't all be tall like Joey. Uh, I mean, it's natural, right? Like that's why Nintendo makes all your the char main characters slightly shorter. It makes you feel like a David versus Goliath sort of thing. That's that's what you want in a game. Back? Did they really do that? Yeah, Link's Link's notably shorter than any of the other citizens. Is that true? Yeah. I mean, when he's a kid. No, no, like Breath of the Wild. Huh. I never noticed. How tall is Link? In? Let's see. Um. Between four eleven and five two, it's typically to make the like impact of the enemies bigger, right? Like if you're the same as if you're doing like a, what it's land a Dutch angle, right? it makes everything look good. A Dutch angle does not make everything look good. Okay, let's go ahead and get into that right now. Um, so for I figured those I would who don't make you know, mad with that one, but don't like know the intention terms, is the same. A Dutch yeah. angle is when you tilt the camera, which um uh i thought it was tilted and looking up i thought it was not both. not not necessarily okay, not necessarily I think, okay. um let me, let me I, I, check. I only ever think of the scene from uh blah, 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 blah. i don't know the scene that everybody thinks of um anyway but the the uh the idea behind it is often that you want to make the enemies look impressive and the, an easy way to do that is make them feel bigger than you and so that's no, I think I don't I don't think you're thinking of a Dutch angle. I think you're thinking of something else. Um, a Dutch angle is like it's weird. You know, you don't see it all that often. It is like the road is going at a diagonal. Like. Like you've taken the camera and you have like this is the normal thing you've gone like Vroom. that's that's a Dutch angle. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking of the scene in like the the one I think of as a Dutch angle is the scene in Pulp Fiction where where it's coming from the back the trunk of the car is the angle you're looking no, at. No, that's not a Dutch angle, but I don't I I don't know what the name of that is. Um. Okay. Well, 
Um, okay, like if I if I Google Dutch angle Pulp Fiction, it pops up immediately. So does more it, does than it really more than just game. I Let should it, have this thought. It. it is also angled, so maybe it's I'm combining two things at once. Yes, you're right. That is a Dutch angle. It is that is actually angled. Yeah. Anyway, we don't need to get into film critiques here. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. Here's our little guy. Um, let's go ahead and uh, put him on the ground. So we're going to... Hmm, do we just want to use the platformer extension? Yeah, sure. He's a platforming guy. Did I move that into Microsoft or not? When Richard and Joey podcast, what do you think this is? Um... Arcade platform. You're not signed in, right? Okay, good. No, I'm not. Um, yeah, I did. Cool. Okay, nice. Thought, oh, yeah. The, you, you run this off your personal computer. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't sign into my work account. My personal computer has madness. That's um, weird. Yeah. All right. Um, actually, I don't think you would let me. Um, so. Hey, isn't that cheating? We want our quarter. I don't think as a quarter master I can take that because that was a justifiable. We did we did move it, but I don't know. I wasn't even doing that to cheat, to be honest. But um, you are right; it was kind of cheating, vaguely cheating. Um, yeah. Um, all right. So here we go. We got our guy. Um, he's a little kid. That's fine. Look out! Look at this teapot. He can fit inside this teapot. Oh, nice. Um. um these don't sit in a teapot. That would hurt. Uh, assuming that there's tea in it. If there's not tea in it, I, you do you, man. I, I can't. I can't control. Oh, it. but what a heist you could pull off. Okay, you get put into Buckingham Palace because you're inside the teapot. You get rolled in on a cart. Then steal the corgi. Yeah. Then when the the queen leaves, you take all the jewels. Not the queen. The king. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to tell you this, Richard. The queen has uh, left. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Sorry, but no, of course. That's not um, nice. unfortunate. Um, uh, okay. Um, we need to clone so, sprites and put code in them, uh, like in Scratch. I, I mean, you can make a sprite. You can make a little clone method. Um, but I, I don't think there's anything built in. We, I'd need to see an example of what you want to do with that um, to make that work. Yeah, if you could give us some more specifics, we might be able to help you out. Yeah, um, just describe what you want done, and we can we can tell you how to do it at least. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's animate this guy. So right now he is just um, moving around, sliding, and made of stone. Um, so inside a platformer, we can go ahead and use the um, animation blocks. And we are going to do, when facing left, we're going to do um, not moving. Where are, you? Where are you not moving? Oh, right, there is no not moving in this one. And uh, let's go ahead and trim this thing so it looks like we can cut off one two three four five pixels here so we'll go ahead and make this 14. that was the wrong one to cut off 12. 11. um let's see we got a question wait is microsoft arcade platformer built in i don't it's not on the approved list so i guess we didn't do that uh but it isn't a microsoft repo so we yeah, I haven't uh, written a documentation for it yet. Gotcha. I was gonna Sorry, say I I'm could sneak it in, but you got you got you got two weeks left to sneak it in by my hands, Richard. I um, it's not in common packages. Um, yeah, I think we are the only people who would ever refer to something built in as being common packages, though. Oh yeah, okay. Let's see. Do I like a skinnier? No, nah, I like a big. Okay. Just um, respect realistic body proportions, Richard. You don't need to. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. OK, um, so uh, we're going to animate this guy. He's just going to be doing bump, 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 bump. Oh, he's vibing. Bump, 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 bump. He is vibing. Um, and let's see, we could do. No, nah, we're going to do, do the simple animation. No, I want to do the complicated one. Sorry, everybody. Um, so how do we do complicated animation? Well, um, we're just going to do this, basically. 
Um, can I ask, is the complicated animation the same one, except the hat takes a second to fall down on the head? No, because oh. hats are, because uh, baseball caps are not. Um, I'm mildly upset, but I, I understand. Yeah, baseball caps are not floppy in real life. Uh, so is it stable? I think it's probably stable. I, I can't imagine we're going to change much, but. What, the platformer kind of... extension? Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I don't think you have to worry about breaking changes there. Um, I might add more features or clean it up a little bit. Uh, let me look at it right now. Let me see if I, anything catches my eye. Eat, set value, set feature, set controls for, yeah, this is all good. None this, of this, is, is this is all pretty generic stuff. Yeah. Uh, I feel like we might want to move these blocks to the top category, but that's about it. Uh, is it is it just they don't have a group? It, that's just that's not a breaking change though. No, they have a group. Yeah, that's um, like I said. There's some polish that needs to happen on this, um, but overall, I, you you don't have to worry about us changing this too much. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So we got this guy. Um, he's as Joey said, vibin. Um, we're going to make this uh, 200 milliseconds, so he's a little bit faster. Nah, it's a little too fast. Do 300. Um, I'm going to work on the game while watching stream. I'm doing the same. Well, I'm yeah. not working on the game, but Richard is, and I'm working on it with him in spirit. Um, there we go. Do the facing left there. And now we need to do moving animations. Um, so it's been a while since I've animated somebody who I like actually had a body. Usually cats. What? Usually cats. Usually I do like little short guys, you know, uh, with no sure. like arms. Um, Just arms do get you, especially hands. Yeah. It's good that you don't have to draw hands. Oh yeah. I never draw hands. No way. Um, all right, we're just going to do my standard walking animation. Um, and then we will go ahead and edit it a little bit in the future to make it a little bit more fluid. So go like that, go like that. Yeah, so as I'm doing this, just go ahead and imagine yourself walking and you'll realize exactly what I'm doing. Um, it's flawless. It's undisp indisputable. And then for this one, we just go ahead and reverse them. And then over here, do that. And then we do the first frame again. Yeah. And set this to be like um, 100. Oof. And there we go. Look at them go. Yeah. Someday when we're near the end of the stream, I'm gonna try and convince you to make it so like you say like we'll do this we'll do the walking animation off stream and come back to it next time. Uh, but then when we come back next time, I want it to be a crab walk just just to throw them off there. Anybody who's watching right now can understand that, but I think it'd be really funny if they just came back and like I got the walking animation done and you just show it. It'd be a good time. I don't know if I could do a crab walk if I'm being honest. That might be beyond my capabilities. I think it. I, I think it's. It'd be mildly horrifying, but that's probably the point. Yeah. All it right, might so look like gonna... that scene in every single horror movie where somebody gets possessed and all of a sudden their like arms are bent back. Yeah, I get you. Okay, um, so we're going to be doing this just uh, a little bit to make this just a little bit more fluid. Um, let me see if I like this or not. Nah. Not okay that. But we will make the arms kind of bounce. Um, and uh, maybe we'll do this as like 80. Just speed it up the tiniest bit. All right, cool. This works. Mm -hmm. Do that while facing right. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this and do facing left. And then we're just going to flip all these frames. Yep. Okay. One more question. Um, yep. For a jumping animation, can we just do the splits? Um, I'm not going to do a jumping animation. Um, and but I, I, I guess I respect you wanting me to just do a Jean Claude Van Damme. Um, yeah, like it, I mean, I, I get like a very strong hop, skip, and a jump uh, vibe from this guy. Is what I'm saying. 
Yeah, really? Like, it's a it's kind of a gallop in this for this one. Just tall enough. Um we gotta, we gotta make that walking animation a little faster. He's kind of sliding. What's the best way to make it where when the projectile hits an enemy enough times, it will delete? Uh, that's I'm assuming uh, each one takes it. Uh, the sprite data, data extension will probably be the easiest one, so you can attach a life to the enemy whenever it spawns, and then you can remove it. You could also use a status bar for the same sort of thing, and you just want to destroy the projectile in the uh, overlap event. Yeah, there so you go. Right. Times. This guy's walking now. Yeah, so we actually are using the sprite data extension in this project also. Um, so sprite data uh, gives you a bunch of blocks down at the bottom of the sprite that lets you store things on a sprite. So um, you know you can store numbers, for example. So I can set a number here, and then I can get the number back. Um, and you can just type in whatever word you want to just store it. Um, and so if you're doing that, um, it's a really easy way to store things, like Joey mentioned, like lives on a sprite. Mm -hmm. um, or you know, in this case, we're storing like um, some information about like where the face should be placed, and yeah. things like that. Um, because you can't just place it anywhere. You gotta place it like in the center of the oven or in the top half of the frit the freezer, I guess. I should I know what a freezer yeah. is. Um okay, I um Hammer falls right. He's kind of scampering a little bit. I feel like I should have made him go up a bit more while he was walking, but uh this is fine. He's just I think it's perfect scampering. as long as you get the uh as long as you get the junk and clad down. Um, all right, uh, maybe we should up his speed just a little bit. Uh, so we're going to go to this controls and we're going to up the speed to, I don't know, 70, just a little bit. Cool. All right. So um, let's get into the main thing we wanted to do for this game, which is being able to bring your household appliances to life. Um, and uh, to make that happen, um, I don't know. How are we going to do that? What, 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 what would you expect? I, I don't know if I want to do the thing where we just shoot a magic projectile and then whatever it hits does it. Is there something else we want to do? It feels very bibbity bobbity boo sort of thing to me. Mm. And I don't know if we've done like a little wand animation. OK, let's see. Vertical Boost is asking, how would using sprite data work? Well, um, so while we percolate on this, Joy, I want you thinking about this the whole time. I'm going to go to an example real quick. Yeah. Um, so um, I'm going to go ahead and in this new project, add sprite data right here. It's the duck with like the thing on it, level one. Um, and I'm going to make a really basic shooter just real quick. So we're going to put in um, an on game update every. I'm going to create a projectile from the side of the screen. Whoops. OK, I'll launch an idea at you while you're doing this one. Uh, Pokeball. Mm -hmm. You throw a Pokeball at an object and it creates that turns them into life. OK, not really what Pokeballs do, but fair enough. Yeah, yeah, who knows? Maybe there's um, some deep lore here that Pokeballs actually turn them all into Digimon. And wild Pokemon are, are free, but Pokemon that have become uh, Pokeballed are Digimonified and, you know, Androids in some sense. I can't, you know, I can't dispute that theory. All right, we're doing a fish versus fish battle here. I'm, of course, the angel fish because... I mean, it's it's in the name. Um, all right. Um, and then let's do on a button press. I'm going to send another projectile from this guy. And I need to change the kind of this projectile to be enemy. So I'm going to do that right now. Set kind to enemy. There we go. And I'm going to launch just a little projectile just do four by four and just fill it in with green, All right? Set the UI to zero, set the VX to be 200. OK, so um, here we go. We have uh, these guys 
oh, and I need to set the Y to be um, 60. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have these uh, projectiles spawning. These are our enemies. And then when I press A, I am firing a projectile. And I want to make it so that when I hit these guys three times, they get destroyed. All right, so I'm going to give each of these guys um, some life. And um, actually, to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to go ahead and uh, slow these guys down. So we're going to do negative 50. And I'm going to put them just randomly on the screen because then it's going to be easier for me to see which ones I'm hitting. So um, let's set the Y to be a random number. We'll do pick random from 8 to 112. And make this every second. OK. Um, so now we have a bunch of fish that are spawning like up and down on the screen. You know, they're going to be just kind of randomly coming in here. Um, so um, I have added sprites out already. I'm going to go into sprites and I'm going to grab the set data to number block, this one right here. I'm going to stick it right here and I'm going to change this item to be my projectile. So um, I need to give a name for this because I want this to be the health of my enemy. I'm going to go ahead and just put in health and I'm going to set this number to be whatever I want the health to be. So we'll, I said three, we're going to put in three here. OK, so I want this health to go down whenever my one of my projectiles hits um, whenever my sprites of kind enemy. So I'm going to go ahead and grab an overlaps event. Here we go. Make the first kind projectile, make the second kind enemy. And in here, first thing I'm going to do is destroy the projectile. This is really important because um, you don't want the overlap event to keep happening. It's going to happen every frame until they're not overlapping or one of them gets destroyed. So now I can shoot these, and you see when it hits a fish, um, the projectile is getting destroyed. Let's go ahead and actually change that health. So uh, I'm going to go back into sprites, and I'm going to grab change data by number. I'm going to make this other sprite. So other sprite right here is the enemy that has evolved in my overlap event. So I'm going to be dragging that out. And here I'm going to choose the same name that I gave to the other one, so health. And I'm going to change it by number negative one. Now this isn't going to magically do anything. Um, if I keep hitting this, guys, um, that health number is changing, but I'm not doing anything with it. So it's you know not having any effect. So what we want to do now is check when their health is zero, and we're going to use an if statement for that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do if equals zero. I'm going to grab the it data as number, this one right here. And once again, drag this guy out of the block, change this to health. And if that health equals zero, then I will destroy my Holly Sprite. Yeah. Um, if you're writing so this one, for your two, own game, nice. you probably want an inequality there, like a less than equal to just to save yourself some trouble in the future when you upgrade your damage or something. But yeah. Um, so, so here you go. Now I need to hit them three times and then they disappear. There you go. That's the basic way to do health. Um, and you know, I could do other things here too. So the thing that Joey just mentioned was I did equal zero here. Um, you probably want to do less than or equals. That's this one. Um, so that if you end up if you make it so you do like five damage instead of one damage, you might go negative. And if that's the case, you want to make sure that you know if it's below zero. Mm -hmm. But I could also do other stuff here. Like let's say if I had one health left, I wanted to change it to be an angry fi fish picture and I want to make it velocity higher or something like that. You know, I could just do all of that stuff here based off whatever the health value is. A berserker fish is a, a race of fish I haven't seen, but I believe in it. Yeah, and so um, numbers are um, uh, uh, not the only thing you can store. You can also store sprites or booleans or strings or whatever you want. So um, yeah, give them the extension a shot. It's a useful one. We use it a lot on stream. Mm -hmm. Oh, and let me, um, sorry. Well, let's see, and I did mention uh, the status bars extension. You can use it pretty much the same way. That would just show a status bar on there. Uh, you have to like attach it and stuff, so it's a little annoying, but uh, both work pretty much the same. Could you send that in chat, sure? Yeah. All right. Um, OK, back to our game. Um, so we can move around now, um, and we are going to do Joey's Pokeball idea. Um, so uh, on A button pressed, we are jumping. Uh, so we're going to put this on B button pressed. Um, and um, on B button press, we are going to create a ha 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 ha. Um, Joey tried to paste it, but he pasted the weird link. Why did they give me that every time? What? 
Why, why did it copy correctly this time? Whatever. All right. So we're going to create a little Pokeball type thing. So let's make this um, five by five. Oh, whoops. You know, it helps if you don't click outside of the. Oh, wait. That, thing. They, let, they let me delete it now, actually, now that I think about it. I just deleted it by happenstance. But a couple of months ago, they didn't let you delete your own moderator message on Twitch. That's that true. Would have been stuck there forever. Um, OK, and um, I probably shouldn't just make this an actual Pokeball, right? Um, probably not. Yeah. Uh, we'll make it a great ball. Um, not not a great ball, just it's a great ball. It, it works very good, very well. It happens to look exactly the same as a great ball. But, but that, um, that's just, you know, this is the vibe that great gives you, right? Yeah. Um, OK. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and set this VXBY to be 0, uh, because we're going to be setting our own um, thing on this. Um, actually, should I make this a platformer sprite? Let's do that. Do you want to do the uh, jumping, like the little bounce animation for when you throw a Pokeball so it bounces three times and then succeeds? Is that what you're going for? No, I just wanted to have gravity. Oh, OK, that does make sense. Um, um, I thought the platform, I mean, the platformer would work well for that, just adding a jump. Life giver is the kind. <laughs> um, OK, so now when I press B, you can see they're no longer spawning at my character. They are just spawning in the middle of the game and then falling to the ground. Um, but And let's actually, uh, these are not standing out well enough. I'm going to go ahead and change this to be something else. No more great ball. Oh, a glaring ball. Yeah. All right. Well, at least you can see it. Um, OK, so we're going to go ahead and um, place this on top of our guy. Um, so let's go ahead and set projectile position. Oh, that's velocity block. Yep. There you go. So now it should be at least spawning on our guy. Um, and now we need to figure out which direction we're facing. So we're going to go ahead and um, uh, put in an if statement here. And inside the platformer extension, just like in the character animations, um, there is. Has state down there. Yeah. Yeah. Has state. Um, so you can check if it's facing left or facing right. So if it's facing left, we're going to give it a velocity to up and to the left. If it's facing right, we're going to give it up and to the right. So let's grab the velocity block. There you go. Set this to our projectile. And so if we're facing left, we want to be negative VX. So we'll do negative 50 is probably fine. And we always want to do negative UI. So we'll do like negative 100. I don't actually know how high that's going to be. Let's see. Pew, pew, pew. Nah, it should be a little higher than that. Negative 150. Pew. OK. Um, and uh, let's do the same thing for the other one. So we're going to make this positive 50. That'll be one we're going to the right. So now I can throw them in both directions. OK, cool. And uh, let's go ahead and also destroy this guy when it hits a wall. So we're going to set on um, destroy on wall projectile. Destroy on wall each at a time. OK, and I want I want there to be a little magical thing that happens when this gets destroyed. We're going to make a little explosion. So. Oh, and also, uh, OK, I just noticed something. I'm setting the VX to be 50, which is actually smaller than my velocity when I'm walking. So 50 plus VX. Yeah, so I need to I need to add VX to this. VX should already be negative for this, so. And so we can just do. We don't have to worry about the sign. All right. There we go. So now, you know, it's basically equivalent if we are walking or not walking. It's so happy. Yeah. 
Um, all right. So let's do the animation when this thing gets destroyed. Um, so when it gets destroyed, we're just going to be using an on destroyed event right here. And we're going to create just a little explosion sprite that is going to animate and then go away. So I'm going to give this a new kind that's just decoration. Um, that's the kind I always give to the things that I like. I don't actually want to be in the game. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to change this to be kind life giver. <laughs> Tough name. Um, and uh, we're going to go ahead and set its position to be the same as our other sprites position. So that's over here. It's over here. And I'm going to do a new variable here. We'll call this temp sprite, a classic. Set the position right there. And we are going to animate this guy. Grab that, put that right here. Um, and uh, we're going to, we'll just make it eight by eight. And let's do a little explosion. So our base thing is five by five. Um, which is that. Is that five by five? Oh, it shouldn't be so even, should it? One, two, three, four, five, six. This is six by six. Great. Okay. Um, so we're going to do um, in keeping with our Pokemon theme. That Joey has established for this project. Thanks. Um. Uh, I see a guy out on the street with a sign saying, stop it before we sue you. Uh, well, they are nearby. I didn't see it. Uh, I don't think they have any grounds this time. Okay. And we'll have one more frame right here. That's going to be like. There you go. All right. That'll do it. Um, okay. Oh, we made that animation a little bit too slow. Mm -hmm. I'll just type in 50 here. And we also need to give this guy a lifespan. So um, we will set the lifespan to be, how many frames do I have? Four. So we're going to set its lifespan to be 200 milliseconds. Here we go. So when you set lifespan, it will automatically destroy it after that time's up. So there you go. Cool. That's. Uh, what I wanted it to look like, pretty much exactly. So, do we look at it? It is very pretty. Yeah. All right. Uh, but when it does catch something, are, are we going to do the bounce, the triple bounce? No, no we're no. not. And also, I don't think we're actually going to be catching anything. But if that's the case, then how will they know to hold B to make sure that it succeeds? Couldn't tell you. Um, okay, I also, you don't hold B, you hold A and up, all right? That's not right, but I'm, whatever. Everybody knows that, Joey. Um, okay, we're going to flip this image horizontally if we're facing left. Um, so, let me grab the image right here. Make this our projectile. Go face left. And it's basically good. Thanks. Thanks. All right, cool. Well, um, I guess real quick, we can make it so that this makes the face appear. So um, we're going to do an overlaps now. So I'm going to do an overlaps with. Uh, 
Okay, overlap between life giver and item. Okay, I'm going to rename the item kind. Sentient object. Um, and when this happens, we are just going to make the face visible and we'll make the we'll make it say ouch or something. Um, so I'm going to grab the data as sprite right here, and I'm also going to grab the set flag block. It's this one right here. And I want to grab the other sprite data. Hey now, come on. And do face and we're going to do invisible. We're going to set that to off. We're also going to destroy this life giver sprite. Drag it out of there. And then we're going to call. Let's see. I have a function for this, I think. Make item say. Can do other sprite and say. Hey. That. Kurt. Nice. Can get you microwave? Gotcha. Thanks. Um, and uh, let's make the camera move so I can see the other guys in this. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. Um, remember, keep an eye out on Friday. I'm going to be announcing when we're going to be doing the game jam stream, probably in the afternoon. Look on the forum; that's where it's going to be. Um. And um, I'm hoping that like our previous game jams streams, we're going to get like a whole bunch of people on, you know, on a bunch of the folks who were involved in, in judging. So hopefully they'll they'll come. Um, and uh, thank you everyone who participated in the game jam. I'm really excited to play all the games. Um, all I've done so far is like I have a big spreadsheet where I put all the games in and I filtered out all of the, you know, duplicate submissions and stuff. Um, what am I looking for? Camera follow. Um, I am Richard at Richard on the Make Code Forum. And I'm Joey at jwonderall on make code form. And um, thank you for watching. And why is why does everything shake nowadays when I do camera follow? Uh, why does it shake? We'll look at that. OK, we'll look at that. Joey's on the case. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Wait, I need to I need to bring all these guys to life. And I'll sign yeah, off. It's kind of messed up to leave one. To yeah, not sentient. Yeah, look at, look, look at all my friends. Wow, such a party. All right, yeah, we gotta send them to war. 